Welcome back, you old pirates. Another series, another round of podcast reviews. Spoiler filled. All of these will be spoiler filled. And, well, I don't know how many of you know of the old or the other podcast, the Dead Kings podcast. But what I used to do, or what we used to do, is we used to go kind of beat by beat and um, talk about every single thing that happened in the show or in an episode of a show and give our, our general consensus and all that good stuff and our opinions and all that stuff. Well, I'm doing this one a little differently. I'm going to mainly focus on what the episode made me feel, what the show is making me feel. Um, and mainly, <laughs> so first and foremost, before I get into anything, this show has had such bad press and it has had a heck of a time. And obviously the statements by Kathleen Kennedy just days before this show even, even premiered, it really set the tone for a lot of people. Like a lot of people went into the show already expecting not to like it and all this stuff, all the, the woke talk, the, 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 the inclusivity talk, all that stuff is what has been behind this, whether it's one side of a fence or another, that's just been two sides of a line yelling at each other about, <laughs> about this show and the director and the cast and all this other stuff. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to touch on that briefly. Um, as you can see, usually I have some, some notes or some bullet points that I'm going to hit off to the right, but I'm, I'm really just going to just chat. Right. Um, and I think I may make like a more edited, scripted version of this, but I just want to get my initial thoughts out first. And that's really what this this podcast review series is for. Um, so first and foremost, I really want to talk about the the whole woke thing, right? I I I don't understand. Like, I understand where people are coming from. Like, saying, "Oh, well, they want to make this woke. They want to make this woke," right? Because Again, what Kathleen Kennedy had said. Now, I know there's a ton of YouTube channels out there that loved to rage bait. They put woke and feminist and this and LGBTQ and all that stuff in their titles and their thumbnails and all that stuff to get people just clicking, rage clicks, hate clicks, all that stuff just to get views. And in, I will say straight up first, <laughs> first opinions is I didn't see any of that in these first two episodes. I didn't see any sort of agenda pushing. I, did, I, did, I really didn't see anything like that along those lines. Um, that's, that's just me. Um, but what I really want to get into is the meat and potatoes, like first and foremost. Uh, it, to me, it really didn't feel like a Star Wars show. Um, it had the, the makings of it. And I, I would say it made me feel like I was watching a fan film, but honestly, fan films have just been hitting the mark for me lately. So it, it feel, it, it does not feel like a star Wars story. And I'm not saying it doesn't feel like George Lucas is star. Wars. It, like star Wars has a certain feel to it. It makes you feel like you're being taken out of your current present day and time. And you're just watching something for the first time ever. And you, you just have that, there is that sense of nostalgia and adventure and all that stuff. And I, I didn't get that with this. Um, and mainly that's because of the plot. Well, first, first and foremost, the first thing I noticed about this show is that the music is just not it, man. It's just like Kenobi to me, forgettable. It seems like it was copyright free. I feel music in Star Wars, the last good show or last show that had good, um, that had good, a good soundtrack, uh, Mando season, I don't really remember any of the music from Mando season three, so I'll say Book of Boba Fett. The Battle of Moss Espa or Battle for Moss Espa, look that song up, that song slaps. I, I love that song so much. Yes, the Book of Boba Fett wasn't great. By any stretch of the imagination, but the music was so good in that show. Um, yeah, but Kenobi's music just wasn't good for me, and I got that on this. Like, if the music in Star Wars isn't good, then it ju it just feels soulless, feels empty, and I'm kind of just waiting for a song or a scene to be over so I don't have to listen to that song anymore. 
Um, the next thing I want to talk about is just that the plot really just doesn't grab me. So right off the bat, it's the plot essentially is there's two twins. One of them is a murderer. It's a murder mystery quotations. And uh, this one twin was at the beginning, f- you know, framed or thought to be the murderer. Then it gets pat- ironed out in like, I want to say like 20, 30 minutes, which is kind of refreshing because like, I was like, oh, we're going to have another Ahsoka Barris thing where this girl's framed for everything. We have to go through a whole season. And at the very end, they're going to be like, oh, no, it wasn't actually her. But no, they, they, they ironed that out pretty quick. And it's her sister working with this acolyte to kill the Jedi for what she thinks the Jedi killed her village and all that stuff. To me, when you're doing a mystery or whatnot, like you tell, we already know now that it wasn't this girl, it's this other girl. <laughs> and the Jedi know now, they know that it's her twin sister. So like, we're kind of just sitting back and waiting for them to capture the sister and capture the the appre- or the master or kill the master. You know what I mean? Um, so again, to me, kind of felt just like put us on rails and we're going to just go along with this very limited kind of, I don't know. I don't know, man. Uninspired story. Like I will say the actors did good with what they were given. Um, I will say the gentleman, let me see if I can bring this. I don't think he, Oh, he's right here. This guy right here. I, I'm not a fan of his character. Simply, like, I get he's, like, the stoic Jedi and all that stuff. I get what they're going for. And I'm sure a ton of you are already going to know what I'm what I'm going to say. But my opinion on him is I can't buy his character for the simple fact that the actor has straight up said that Anakin blew up the Death Star. And the, <laughs> I, know, I know I've even been one to say separate, <coughs> excuse me, separate the actor from their work but when they're what the actor is saying literally is about the franchise that they've been hired to work for you'd think they do at least a little bit of book study a little like it's it's weird to me and i can't like every time i'm watching this character i'm just like man you just this the actor playing this character straight up like just doesn't know the lore and obviously i don't know um the other issue to me was there were a good couple scenes where it just felt like they were reading a script where it wasn't actually the character saying these things. They were just kind of reading their lines, maybe off a teleprompter over someone's shoulder. It was very dry to me. Um, but again, I'm, I'm like, it is first two the first two episodes. I, I will say now I'll, I'll, I'll stop being toxic and, and, and negative. I will say that the fight choreography to me was very good. I know a ton of people hate hand-to-hand combat in Star Wars. I, I've been wanting to see more of it. I'm really glad that it is done well, that we're seeing it. Um, and it has a good reason behind it because the uh, the the assassin chickadee, she her master's like, I don't want you to use weapons. You know, you don't need weapons to kill a Jedi and stuff like that. Only to contradict himself and turn on a <laughs> lightsaber, but I'm like, whatever. I really, really enjoyed the hand-to-hand combat scenes. Um, a lot of people, myself included, were kind of iffy about them in the trailers when they first when they first dropped. And I'll I'll say, and you know, quote myself from the trailer. I said it's a trailer for a Star Wars thing, and that's that is. Like, this didn't feel like they were trying to push merchandise or they were just trying to pump out a show. It, I, it does feel like a project that a, 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 a close group of people worked on. To me, it would have been elevated even more if the music was good. Um, also, again, I know we're only two episodes in. I feel this is this may be might be a hot take here. I don't I don't know what constitutes a hot take anymore. But I feel um, that I don't think, other than the master, that, like, the, the grand master, I don't think we're going to, I can't remember his name. He's the character right here, gentleman right here. Um, 
other than him, I don't feel like we would feel any emotional weight if one of the other characters died. Again, I'm giving it time. You know, I'm actually going to got to got to roll that back. That character and the Wookiee Jedi that we saw at the end of the second episode. I I feel I just cuz you know someone's going to die. People are going to die. Hopefully they stay dead. Um that's a big issue Star Wars has and just Marvel or Disney stuff in general. Is people die but they don't stay dead. Um But yeah, uh I did like the small use of lightsabers in this show. Um, they obviously there's a good bit of igniting and holding people at, at sword point and stuff like that. But to me, my, I'm, I'm very big on you. Jedi only need to bring out their lightsabers when they absolutely need to. And I feel like the sequels really, they really, they really dusted that they really i don't even know if you want to say dusted i guess crop dusted on it um because like there's a deleted scene where ray is running in the last jedi she's running because she hears a disturbance or something like that she's running across the field and it was actually in the a trailer but she uses the force and it's those village people and she's like what the heck and they're all like oh you broke something and she kind of just turns her lightsaber on or i think it's already on and she kind of waves it around like a glow stick a little bit and that's that's such a uh I guess a nitpick, but there are so many other points and times where lightsabers and Star Wars are just kind of igniting them to be like, hey, hey, look, here's a lightsaber instead of, hey, this lightsaber is being ignited for a reason. The big one to me is, like, I might get flack for it, but my favorite Star Wars movie in all of Star Wars is The Phantom Menace. And when Qui-Gon, they drop down, Qui-Gon does some work, um, it's when they think they go back to Naboo. Qui-Gon does some work. For, force pushes a droid, puts his lightsaber away. He doesn't keep it out. Isn't I don't I don't know. Like it's if, if you get me, you get me. I don't know. Um, and then the other time too was in Empire Strikes Back when Luke is under the walker, uses the cable to go up, turns on his lightsaber, cuts it open, turns it back off. Like it's not just to be like, hey, here's a lightsaber. Look at the lightsaber. Look at the the weird spinny stuff we're gonna do. <laughs> Nothing makes sense. So that's what I I, I I did enjoy about this. Um, uh, there, there's the lightsabers are a little they are a little thick. The hilts are pretty thick. They remind me of the savvy work, savvy's workshop sabers in in the parks. But um, I don't know. All in all, this show again, I didn't feel like there was an agenda being pushed. I understand like this is a story that is trying to be told but again in my opinion it's one that it's it's a, i don't know like i i think to me also like this being in the era of the high republic i feel like this would have been an interesting story post sequels like obviously and i a lot of people don't like my stance on this i've been told multiple times and in multiple comments to just get over this but this is why i had the issue that i did with andor right is that we all know cassie and andor's fate right we we more or less at least for the humans know their fate in a hundred years it's going to be a different story order 66 is going to happen and if they didn't die by the end of the high republic they definitely got wiped out during order 66 um but it's to me, it would have been nice and interesting to see this story continue on where it's like, oh, hey, the Jedi are back up to their former glory. And now there's something happened on a Jedi mission that went awry. And now there's someone who wants to get their get back on the Jedi. They're not a Jedi. They're not a full Sith right now, but they are a force user who wants to get their get back on the Jedi. I, 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 I want something that doesn't have a stopping point that we don't know what's going to happen. I think that's what was, that was the thing, not even that it just being star Wars, but the thing about the sequels was that it was something, obviously we didn't know where it was going to go. Now the prequels, it was a story we didn't know. We had never known about young Obi-Wan, young Anakin, the rise of Darth Vader. That was new rogue one. For instance, we had no idea how the rebellion got the death star plans, right? To me, like Solo, Solo to me, I I really enjoy. I had fun with Solo, right? 
but it was just kind of like a heist movie. It took place. It was a little thing that took place right here and there, you know, like at this point at this time. And I'm a really big Lando fan. So the more Lando, the merrier. But really, when it's a story like this and it's a series that's going to that wants to branch into something new or bring in a ton of new characters, I'd like to see it in a time and in an era where we don't know what's going to happen. We, so we can fully get invested and say, hey, this is my new favorite character. This is my new this. This is we don't know where this is going to go. We, we know what happens. Only two there are. Palpatine rises to power. <laughs> Like, maybe, and I've seen the theory, and we'll get into theory time here in a second, but I've seen the theory that Plagueis is actually the Acolyte, and he's under the helmet and all that stuff, and that he goes through a ton of different um, apprentices before he gets to to Palpatine. Um, There's also a theory that Plagueis never existed at all, and Palpatine made it up, but I don't know. Anyway, excuse me. Um... But I just, the show, the show does like, it, it, it has an identity, at least. It's not like, oh, they don't know what they're doing, this and that. Like, it was really, when I look back at the Kenobi show, or even the book of Boba Fett, the book of Boba Fett just didn't know what it was doing. It had, it, it wanted to turn Boba into a crime boss, but then he was like, I am actually not a crime boss. I'm just going to take the title of Daimyo and liberate a city that, isn't visibly distraught i don't know it it, the book of boba fett didn't have an identity this at least has its feet on the ground it's like hey this is what this is this is what we are take it or leave it type of thing i'm gonna watch a couple more episodes and if it doesn't get me then it doesn't get me um but realistically there's not too much to be said and i find it hard to really just review first episodes because disney does the thing where they drop the first two episodes and then they're loyal, loyal people. They'll fly out somewhere, have them go to an event where they see, I think some people have seen the first four episodes and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's like half the first season. Um, and for me, this is, this is, uh, this is my take on Disney's on Disney's streaming stuff. My take on Disney's mini series and their TV shows and their streaming stuff they need to stop with the eight episode stuff. They need to stop with the mini series. They need to give us go back to the days like The Walking Dead. I, I think The Walking Dead, what The Walking Dead have like 12, 13 episodes in a season or something like that. Um, if I remember correctly, Sons of Anarchy, what they were up there with double digit number um, episodes. And also, too, you've got a budget of 190, 180, 190 million dollars. Like, give instead of eight episodes, let me let me check real quick and see how many episodes the Acolyte has. Okay, yeah. So the Acolyte has eight episodes. And to me, with a story like this, I guess you could tell a murder mystery story in eight episodes, right? But I feel like I just want more time with the characters. I want to fully develop. The characters i want good character arcs like honestly i look at it the arc of father gabriel in the walking dead right he's not a main character he's a side character but he went from a, a, a small coward a small coward that was willing to rat on his on the people who saved his life to one of the most badass people in the show and that's what i want i want you to flesh out a character like how is it and this is this is this is my defense on this is How is it that in the book of Boba Fett, right, a character who you want to be like, oh, he's evolved to this and this is who he is now. He is the same person from the beginning of the show, not the beginning of his return, but the beginning of his show to the end of the show. There's no difference. There's no change in Boba Fett at all. There's no change in anybody at all. No one evolves. No one has a character breakthrough, at least Din throughout his three a three season run has changed from completely hating droids and only doing things that the children of the watch want him to do to being accepting of droids and being a father figure and all that stuff. I want, again, I want like, I want, I want these characters to do well. I want this show to do well. I I really hope that they don't botch it. But again, first two episodes, we're going to like quarter of the way in. We're going to, we're going to see, um, I guess theory time 
is low key. My theory might is that um, the yarn dude, yod dude, I, I yarn. I can't remember his name. This this dude, where is he? You can't you can't see him, but or he's far left. This dude might be the acolyte, um, because it was there was one scene where, uh, the grandmaster and the assassin chick are fighting, um, right below him. And he kind of, he pulls up these binoculars and it just focuses on him a really weird amount of time. And I'm like, huh, that's, that's suspicious. That's weird. Um, but really that's my only theory I have. I think what I'm going to give again, it's, I used to not like doing this. Um, but I think I'll bring it back for this, for this series. My opinion on this, I'm going to give it a out of, I'm going to give this out of 10. 10 being the greatest, 1 being the worst. I'm, I'm going to give it a 5, middle of the road. Uh, it could be better. It couldn't really be any worse. Not saying that it was the most terrible thing in the world. That title is still with the Book of Boba Fett. But it could be better, middle of the road for me. That will do it. I know it's a little bit of a shorter one, but I'm trying to keep these solo ones quick to the point. My first raw emotions. I would go back and watch through, but I feel like I got everything, man. Like, again, there, there were some story points. It, I'm, I'm really just talking about how the episode made me feel. Um, but, yeah, realistically, that'll do it for this one. Let me know what you thought down below, and I will see you all next week for the next episode of The Acolyte.